Hello and welcome to the AWS Ninja. I want to take the next few minutes in guiding you through how to create an effective, low maintenance, accurate web ACL with AWS WAF targeted at mitigating DDoS attacks. So as you probably know, DDoS is just a fact of the internet. If you have a website or an API, or any kind of HTTP public application, it's bound to get DDoSed at some point, um, or at least abused by some script kitty or any kind of random script that targets your application. So uh, I'm gonna take you through some of the basics in creating protections or using AWS WAF effectively, specifically against DDoS. I'm not gonna focus on anything AWS WAF can do besides DDoS. So I'm not going to talk about SQL ejection and cross-site scripting and all sorts of cool things you can do with it. It's strictly for DDoS. But before I do that, I want to highlight the fact that if you do have a web application, you, you're probably better off not exposing it directly through your application load balancer or your API gateway or whatever it is that you use to expose the web application directly to the web. You probably want to first go through CloudFront. So CloudFront pro first provides like a coarse grain filter for random internet junk. So anything that doesn't have your specific host name and the host header just get dropped by CloudFront. Obviously non-HTTP traffic, mail form traffic, non-port 80 and 443, these are all types of traffic that just get blocked natively with CloudFront. And uh, Potentially, you get rid of a lot of the internet noise just by limiting access to your web application to be strictly allowed from CloudFront. So set up a distribution is easy. We can probably cover that on another video. Uh, I wanna focus on using AWS WAF to defend against DDoS. So the, the steps described here are exactly the same as they would be uh, for ALB, uh, API Gateway, and CloudFront or any of the other services that you can use WAF with. Uh, in this specific case, I'm using it with CloudFront, but it's just the same, exactly the same. So the first thing you probably want to do um, is a quick, quick stopgap you can use, and that's adding a new managed rule to your application. Uh, it's under the managed AWS rules. It's the IP reputation managed rule. So this list, of IP addresses is managed and IP updated by AWS and it contains three categories. So known bad IPs, known IPs that uh, uh, are listed as reconnaissance agents scanning the internet. And this is the big one, right? That, that's the list that contains all of the ongoing IP addresses that AWS sees currently participating or recently participating in DDoS attacks. This list is set to count because it has all sorts of domestic IP addresses, mega proxies that commonly um, deal DDoS attacks. So for your own sake, you can switch that to block, right? So these three are more than half the job. If you add this managed rule to your web ACL, DDoSers will have a much, much harder time to impact your application. But that's only the first step, right? So basically blocking all known bad IP addresses. Another thing you want to do, and that these uh, first two rules that I'm showing are the bare minimum. So another thing you want to do is to add your own rule. And let's call it basic rate limit. And that's a rate based rule. And you have to find the number that suits your application. So if a normal user uh, runs like 500 requests within a, an average five minute period, you probably want to go with something higher, like three times higher than that. Uh, so your mileage may vary for sure. Uh, and picking this number is definitely an art form. You need to have an understanding of your access logs and how many uh, requests a typical normal user would do uh, with your application. Um, are you dealing with proxied traffic that has a lot of users behind a single IP address? If it's a mobile game, uh, you might have CGNAT situations where you have a single IP address hiding thousands of users potentially. But your number eventually should be something that is safe for you to use. 
Uh, I'm not going into the depth of the different rate-based rules. So I have another video for that. Uh, but for now, we'll just use this rule naively, just adding a number of requests to act as the maximum number of allowed requests from a single source IP. After which, we start blocking this IP. Um, you can choose another thing. You can choose like to captcha or to challenge, like a JavaScript challenge. This the, the request number two thousand and one. Um, but in case of DDoS, and if two thousand is like a, or whatever, if if this number is like three times high as high as your average user, uh, that's that's safe to use with block mode. So that's something you can do easily enough. You just add this rule. You can put it anywhere, really. There, are the priority doesn't matter in this case. Um, and just save the web ACL. Now, if your application deals with specific geographies and only has like users coming from specific countries, let's say the U.S. and Canada, um, or, or something like that, you can definitely use some uh, geo-based controls. So you can add your own rules. And you can have a rule statement that says if request is coming from a specific country or if request is not coming from uh, the US and Canada, only then I want to maybe rate limit, maybe I want a challenge, maybe I want to capture. So you can easily start making it more difficult to send attacks from other countries. Um, if your application is totally global, then customers may come from anywhere. You may not may not want to use this, or you may want to have a, a, a negative rule that says, if traffic is coming from a specific location, I don't know, uh, Christmas Island, uh, only then we want to block it. So you can use geo restrictions for sure, but use them smartly and make sure that you don't uh, damage your partners or your main customers wherever they're coming from. In this case, let's let's leave it at that. I'm gonna add this rule. You probably want to put it uh, somewhere higher up, but in this set of rules, it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna save it. With that, surprisingly enough, you're pretty much covered. The IP reputation list will take care of a lot of the heavy lifting when it comes to blocking DDoS attacks, uh, especially if you remember to enable the IP DDoS uh, subgroup here. This is super effective in blocking DDoSers. I mean, for now, <laughs> they're kind of lazy and they're, they're using the same IPs over and over again. And this list is kind of big. It contains a lot of IP addresses recently participating in DDoS attacks. So by enabling this and then enabling your rate limiting rule, you're pretty much covered uh, when it comes to uh, basic DDoS protection. Now, you, wanna, you might want to make sure, especially if you've done some coarse grain controls, such as geo-blocking for all traffic, which does not come from a specific region, if all of your customers are coming from a specific country, you want to make sure that you're not blocking um, like search engines and good bots, you know, the, 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 the bots that keeps the internet running, search engines and the like. Uh, so for that, as a, an extra step, if you are concerned with, this, uh, with these bots not getting blocked, uh, and if you have already enabled some coarse grain controls that block like half the planet, uh, you want to, to consider adding bot control and making sure that the verified bots, the good bots that should never ever get blocked are indeed not blocked. So let's let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to add another manage rule here. And this is going to be a paid rule. So it does have an extra cost, right? So uh, bot control does have an extra cost depending on the level in which you run it. We're going to run it in common. Uh, which is a dollar per million with the first 10 million requests included in the subscription fee, which is 10 bucks a month. So I'm going to edit and select common bot control. Now, if you are concerned with known bots, you can keep it at that and, and block all of the known user agents that, you know, self-proclaim to be bots. For DDoS pur uh, purposes, 
you can you can just you know, forget about it switch all of the categories to count that's not what i would do but if you don't want the headache and you only want to deal with ddos nothing else so you can switch all of the bot categories to count right uh and save the rule and this really does nothing except for marking incoming requests if they have been sent by a a known bot i'm gonna move it up a bit uh, just above the geo controls or whatever blocking rule you have that you want to keep search engines from getting blocked by. So I'm going to move it up a bit and I'm going to click save. Now this rule, I will, I'll remember, I'll remind you all that we switched it to count so it doesn't really do anything. So I'm going to add another rule, this time a custom rule, my own rule. Let's call it uh, loud verified bots and i'm gonna do a statement that says if the request was labeled as verified namely if bot control labeled the request as a verified bot meaning it's a bot that bot control knows is a good bot so a google bot having the google bot user agent coming from the google bot uh, uh, address range uh we're gonna make sure that it's allowed so if a request but was flagged by bot control as verified it's gonna be allowed in regardless of what it's doing at which rate and i'm gonna hit uh, uh, add and i'm gonna pick a place for it that makes sense in this case i'm gonna place it right before the rate based and geo blocks uh rules if you want to be extra super duper safe, you can have bot control even take place before the IP reputation rule. I wouldn't recommend that because this rule has a cost associated with it. And when it comes to DDoS, a lot of the requests will get blocked by the IP reputation rule. So this is the order I would recommend you run your web ACL at. So first block all of the obvious known IP addresses, again, 90, 95% easily blocked by this rule. Then a uh, label, basically uh, flag all good bots and bad uh, with a label. And then make sure that if a label, if a bot was verified, we allow it in. And only then we block, you know, bad countries, countries which are suspicious and so on and so forth. And then obviously the basic rate limit. Now, there are more rate limit rules we can uh, associate with the web ACL. We can have more sensitive rate limits, like uh, uh, this was set pretty high, remember? This was set as, at, at 2000, but we can say that uh, we don't want to allow, uh, if we have a very sensitive database, we don't want to allow more than a certain number of post requests in general from everybody at once, uh, not, nor, not per IP. And for that, we can add another rate limiting rule, rate limit, post and I'm going to create a rate based rule and I'm going to say that 500 post requests are everything I can I can handle within five minutes obviously this is a low number right no read application is that slow but you know you might have an application that which is that slow so I'm going to run uh, no more than 500 post requests from everybody at once and in order to do that I want to count requests based on the HTTP method. So not based on the source IP, but based on the method. And I'm gonna bucket all requests uh, per their method, the method that they used. So this will only allow 500 requests within a five minute period for each method. So for get, post, uh, head, options, whatever but I only want to rate limit post requests. So I'm going to scope down the rule to examine only post. So this is a bit complicated, right? So I'm going to rate limit all requests based on their HTTP method, not their IP address. And I'm going to limit that at 500. But this rule is only valid for requests which are 
post requests. So this rule effectively limits the total number of post requests within a five minute period to 500. Probably 5,000 makes more, th more sense in real world scenarios, but maybe more, whatever works for you. But this number is counting all requests, not per IP, but all post requests and limit them. I'm gonna save that, obviously set it to block. I'm gonna save that and add that and put it, uh, in this case, at the bottom of my WebACL is fine. Now, this basic list of rules, it takes a couple of minutes to set up, is super effective against DDoS. I mean, if you can only manage two rules, make sure that it's this one and this one. So rate limiting and IP reputation. As for the rest, this is like common best practices. If you, if you know more, you can do more. But if you can only allow yourself to add, you know, a couple of rules and you don't have the time to manage them, these two rules will do wonders for you against DDoS messages. And that's it for now. Thanks for listening. Thanks for joining in. Stay safe, everybody.